Okay, so another video, and if you're new to this, I'm doing a Bible series. I got a playlist called the Bible series on ABC Christian 5. So my channel is um, ABC Christian 5. And that being said, here in the King James Bible, 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 5, perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds, and destitute of the truth, supposing supposing that gain is godliness, from such withdraw yourself thyself. So there's like a lot of these Bible verses. There's a lot here, and that could be taught about in just this verse. Um, that being said, you know I do want to cover some of this before I get into you know what's missing in the new versions. And yeah, that's true. These um, why is there so many translations? If you ask, well. Just to make it easy, um, the King James and some of the other Bibles before King James Bible, they come from one line of manuscripts, usually called, like I think, the received text or the majority. As far as the majority of manuscripts, they agree with the ones that the King James. Now, I've heard numbers like 95% of the manuscripts, something like that. But look, look it up yourself. And then the minority manuscripts, which some people say like 5%, but again, look it up yourself, would be the ones that were used for like, let's say the New International Version, which maybe is not the best example because they kind of paraphrased at times, it seems like to me. But so do some of the times it seems like the other versions too. But like the English Standard Version, you could say, and stuff like that, used the minority manuscripts. And one more thing, again, if you haven't seen the last video or one of the last videos, the revised version was kind of like the official revised King James version of 40 or 50 scholars and academic people and experts, so-called. But it wasn't a revision. So they told people it's going to be a revision. And it took a while for it to get going, from my understanding. Like it wasn't um, well taken at first. But, you know, once they had more people on board and said, oh, look, we're just revising it's going to be official so back then people probably thought oh they're just going to redo some of the words and maybe the what's described as archaic words or something and come up with a new word but they did actually change more than that and sometimes the doctrine and you can see the bible series so here again from this verse in first timothy 6 5 we would have to see um, the previous verse but just notice that some people have corrupt minds and then they become destitute of the truth. So the Bible is described as the truth. Jesus is des Jesus is described as the truth. So then they don't have the truth, and um, that's un that's unfortunate because you know God wants everyone to be saved, and you should have that same heart where you want everyone to be saved. But that being said, this happens, and it's good to be aware of this tr uh, truth. So you know, not only does it happen to you, but you can uh, you know warn others about it. So, you know, if you, you get this sometimes if you, you know, I don't share the gospel as much as I should maybe, but if you go, if you see some of the videos online of maybe people sharing the gospel or if, if you have, sometimes there will be people trying to dispute it. It's not, and that's very key. You should know the difference where someone, you know, you're presenting the gospel and someone's listening and maybe they're not saying much or they're kind of have honest questions. Um, you know, that's, that's can be good. But then sometimes you get people that are contentious, that are what the Bible's saying here, disputing it. And sometimes it can be a little bit subtle, but sometimes it can be, you know, yelling. But it's not always going to be yelling. It can be if the person then talks themselves and will try to say certain things, and you have to pay attention to what the words they're using. And um, so the Bible says some people have corrupt minds. So even if you make a good, you could say, argument or give proof of the Bible and you could do, you know, everything that's needed, they still won't receive the truth because of the corrupt minds and they're destitute of truth. Um, they might say they care about the truth, but they really don't. And, you know, it doesn't have to always be just about the Bible, but in this case, it is talking about the Bible, the truth of Jesus and how he died for our sins and rose from the dead. And then... What's interesting, too, so for some of these people, um, you know, they think gain is godliness. Now, I've seen, you know, some people that 
are destitute of the truth and they're more like you could say you know not too much materialistic but they're more like you know the new age kind of like more hippie thing so they're not a, you know not really for some of the things of the world but then they get trapped in like vain philosophy and new age and cults and stuff like that and it's sad because these people um maybe really see the things of the world and it doesn't really um satisfy them as far as maybe fame and money but then instead of seeing themselves as a sinner in need of a savior which you need to do they don't want to admit that they're that bad it seems like to me you know and um you know it's unfortunate and they'd rather have you know man-made doctrines and philosophies rather than the truth and look you know it's the first time i read the bible there's some stuff i didn't understand there's some stuff that i didn't even like, you read for the first time and think that's you know could be bad or maybe i didn't want to even agree with but i i knew it to be true and you know that's a prayer you could do you know help me lord to um you know the person help me with my faith help me to believe that could be a prayer it was a prayer in the bible and also too for some of the things like you know if someone did have a problem with let's say you know um you know god killing 185,000 people um just he knows what he's doing so um you know we're not god god is all knowing he knows what he's doing just trust in him and he's good so if you just focus if, if one person just focused on you know maybe god killing in the flood or those 185,000 syrians and didn't focus on the other things i'd say you have a, a skewed view of god you want to take in everything it's just kind of like too like it's good to focus on the love of god right and he wants to save sinners and he's merciful and long suffering so it's good to focus on that but then if you take out the judgment part where god does send people to hell and he does kill people and you take that out well then you don't have the right view of god and then you're going to compromise and think well almost everyone's going to heaven when the bible doesn't say that the bible says narrow is the way because a lot of people you know if it was up to us you know some of us you know we wouldn't be um always you know making the right decisions but god does so just i say you know that's just a um trust in him but this last part of the verse it says it's very important from such withdraw thyself now you know what happens if you're working with someone like this and you're paired to work with them you can pray about it that maybe you could work with somebody else but if a lot of the people at the work are like this um maybe just you don't have to talk about the bible and stuff like that i mean if they a lot of people you know you're going to find out already know about the bible especially here in america if um, but not everyone so it's good to share the gospel but you know you're gonna have to use your discernment here and some people know the bible and they just want to accept some of it like i was talking about but not other parts and you know sometimes just by bringing this up it could be um trouble for you you know they could um try to set you up or try to get you fired or do something to you and but god's bigger than that so trust in god and sometimes you know it works for good so even if you do get turned in or just remember that too and i always try to lately think okay what if you know something you know someone did slap me or someone did start swearing at me or something um not that it happens but if it does you know you got to think how you're going to react and hopefully it's a natural reaction but there's times you know um, where it can take a person by surprise or, you know, sometimes I get like migraines and stuff and it can be hard to deal with stuff, but you want to always, you know, have that in your heart to react by turning the other cheek. And I always thought that meant, you know, turning the other cheek and getting slapped again. And it, it kind of does mean that obviously, but also the application is too that, um, you're ready to forgive and, you know, take on whether it be verbal abuse or, slander and not not uh slander again you know the bible says don't um you know if someone's railing on you don't rail against them so if someone's cursing at you don't curse at them but bless them and how do you bless them you could pray about you could pray about for them and um, you don't know what they're going through maybe it's something not to, that it you know justifies it but you could pray about it maybe they're going through a death or a divorce or something like that or a physical abuse so you can or maybe they're abused as a child so you could pray about it for them and then also, too, you could do something kind, like uh, maybe, you know, give them the better job at work or, you know, try to, you know, just, you know, carry the load if you have to, if you have to work faster or still be nice to them. So, but that being said, if if you have a chance, you're supposed to withdraw thyself from these people. And, you know, sometimes it can even be in a church setting, right? We have churches that, 
say, well, we're accepting everyone, including, you know, witches and um, people that are homosexuals. And the Lord wants those people to repent. So by people saying, well, you know, they're going to heaven and it's okay what they're doing. You're not helping those people because some of those people need to hear that. Okay, if they're just if they just hear like, oh, you're right and you're not doing anything wrong. It's just like a child that would hear that, oh, you know, you're being, you know, uh, they're being bad. Maybe they're being disobedient, hitting their uh, brother or sister and being naughty. They need to hear that. But um, so in this case, let's say um, you do come across someone and um, it could be someone that, you know, even was a family member or maybe was a friend and you didn't realize that you were supposed to, you know, maybe you guys didn't talk about religion to that friend too much. And, and then you realized, okay, this is what they really think. And you tried sharing the gospel and just, you can just tell, you know, they have such a warped view of the world and gospel and sin and all those things. And you found out there after they think money is somehow, you know, that's all they care about money. Let's say you just somehow it happened where you ran. So then you're supposed to withdraw thyself. So you're not supposed to be hanging out them, hanging out with them, you know, spending time with them. And, you know, if it's in the church too, then, you know, church discipline and, you know, kind of get the church together and try to tell that person. And then if they don't hear in this case, they probably wouldn't hear, right? If they um, were corrupt minds and they were just, let's say maybe um, destitute of the truth. So this is someone that's probably not a believer. I take it to, you know, they're destitute of the truth. They're destitute of Jesus and his word. Um, then you're supposed to withdraw thyself from them. But the thing is, the new versions, the new, they leave that out. And that's the that's an important part too. Like all, every word's important. And I said in other videos where it's kind of like, okay, sometimes they chose the new versions, a word that has a similar meaning. So they have a word in the King James Bible. And sometimes the new versions chose a word that's very similar and basically means almost the same thing. But remember that God, I believe, was making the Bible. And why wouldn't he? It's his book. So, and why couldn't he translate it into English? Because he is the word. So he made the languages. So he could do it and he did. So then when they came up with a new version, someone might say, well, you know, this, in this case, the word, this word or something is similar. Uh, maybe not in this example, but then, you know, what's the deal? What's a big deal if it's a different word that is similar meaning or something? Well, it is a big deal because God, if he wanted that book, uh, if he wanted that word, he would have picked that word, I think, you know. And but there's bigger examples here, like they take out this from such withdraw thyself. So, um, you know, if I just read it in the English Standard Version, um, it says, "And constant friction among people who are depraved in mind and depraved of the truth, imagining that godliness is a means of gain." But then they leave out um, the part from such withdraw thyself. And um, the King, New King James Bible has it, but again, just in case someone's new, the New King James Bible takes out things like hell like 22 times. So, you know, I don't know why you'd want to read the New King James Bible, but some people think that it's easier to understand because it doesn't have the thighs and these and um, thous and stuff. But um, if you study that out, uh, the experts in English or people that know about that say by taking the thy and these out, it changes like um, the plural to maybe singular and it, it messes it up. So um, they say that's why it needs to be there. So that being said, even the New King James Bible takes out other things too. Um, in this case, it does have from such withdraw, thy, withdraw thyself. But the other versions, like the English Standard Version, they don't have withdraw thyself. And that's important because without that, you wouldn't have that, you could say, command to you know not hang out with someone that's you know trying to think that, oh, if I get rich, that's the meaning of life, which it isn't. Or someone that, you know, is just chasing, you know, I'm not saying you can, you know, if you see him at work or something and they say hi, you could say maybe hi back and maybe just very small talk. But or if you have to work with them, you know, I mean, but I, I wouldn't go, you know, out of their way or let's go to Starbucks and let's go to the movies together and let's go, f you know, and, um, you know, so it's just like one of those things like you got to separate themselves because if you you know, hang out with these people and maybe you don't talk about religion or these things that much, but now you know what they really think, you know, by you just hanging out with them, um, they're going to think that maybe what they're doing is okay. Um, maybe they're being convinced it's not, but, but even not for them so much, but other people. 
So like maybe this person won't come to the truth. Um, God still would want them to, but maybe they just won't. But other people see that, and let's say they knew you were a Christian, and they knew this guy uh, wasn't, and uh, you know people might see that and think, well, you know, if he's hanging out with them, you know, what I'm doing is okay, and it, you know, kind of like like I said earlier, some of the churches teach like almost everyone goes to heaven, which isn't true. And that's what, you know, us as humans want to think sometimes, like, oh, my sin's not that bad. And, you know, but God's holy and he doesn't have no sin. So even a little sin's bad. So we got to have the right perspective. And um, so those things, but God's willing to forgive. And um, and he's willing that none should perish. That God's not um, slack concerning the promise, but and he's not willing any should perish, but all come to repentance. So that being said, you know, it's kind of a long video on this, but you know, some things I want to cover. So I got two more videos here and then the series might be over. So the King James series, um, or about well, the Bible series actually. And again, you know, I, for other languages, you know, I, there are Bibles in other languages. I have this program called, called the sword searcher, but just be careful of, uh, you know, again, I use some of the dictionaries, but even sometimes the dictionaries, like I gave a warning about Smith's dictionary, but even if you looked at some of these other dictionaries, whether it be Easton's, which I have in and a faucets. I have both in paperback or hardback. Moorish, I think I have his Moorish Bible dictionary. And uh, Smith is included here. So but sometimes they get it wrong and you have to discern, okay, like a whale really means a whale. Um, sometimes they can be helpful. So I'm not trying to act like they're not helpful. Same with the commentators, um, the pool and um, Barnes, you know, Gill even. I like those commentators, even, even Jameson, Fawcett and Brown. And some of these other ones I don't use as much, but sometimes they're wrong too. So you have to, they're still helpful. And, you know, I gave a warning about the Strong's, but a lot of people use it and it's, they say it's helpful, help, helpful for them. But the warning was just more or less, you know, a warning on, um, you know, sometimes if they give a definition, you know, just like these other Bible dictionaries, just be careful. You know, I don't, there are people that just go to the Strong's before they almost go to the Bible. And there's people that go to the commentators before the Bible, and it shouldn't be that way, you know. Obviously, you should try to figure out what the Bible says first, and then these are just kind of like, you know, study guides. You know, if you want to see, oh, I wonder where this uh, word appears elsewhere in the Bible, so I'll look it up in the Strong's Concordance. Or the comment, I don't know this phrase, I don't understand it, and then you look it up in the commentator, or the, you know, something like the dictionary. It's like, oh, I don't know what this name was in the Bible, or this... Uh, this place, this location, and then you look up the location in the, like, the dictionary or even in the encyclopedia of the the old International Standard Bible Encyclopedia, and then you get, and be careful of them too sometimes, but then you get all the references of the locations. They can be helpful. So I don't want to be, you know, coming across as like against all these things. It's just, there needs to be a little bit of warning and caution and stuff. So yeah, I know a lot of people use Webster's 1828, but again, even them, you know, can be wrong. So even me, I was wrong a lot of times in the videos. You know, I, I still will be wrong sometimes probably, you know, but um, the thing is, that's why once you believe the Bible, that it's perfect, and you know, the King James Bible, and it doesn't have any mistakes, it's really going to build your faith, because then, you know, you don't have to have any doubt, and you just believe it happened. And sometimes you might not, again, understand the verse, or, you know, that some stuff, you know, might not even seem like it's possible but remember the bible verse that all things are possible with god so remember that so okay thanks for watching and um i might do the next two videos on the bible series and if you read english use the king james bible